We previously referred to Article 9 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. I, by the way, have this compendium of African key human rights documents of the African Union. And these are published by the Pretoria University Law Press Pulp. And I have a hard copy here, but these are also available online. So one just goes to the Pretoria University Law Press website, P-U-L-P Pulp that gives you access to a number of the treaties and case law of the African Commission. Article 9, as I mentioned, states that every individual shall have the right to receive information. So there is no specific or explicit right to access to information in the African Charter, but there is this right to receive information. So it's no wonder perhaps that initially in its earlier life, the African Commission established a special mechanism. Special mechanisms are members of the Commission that undertake missions and advance specific thematic concerns within the African continent. So the African Commission established a special rapporteur on freedom of expression. But later on, after a number of years, that mandate was changed to also include access to information. And I think that comes from the fact that the African Charter is not explicit about access to information, but it also comes from the reality or the realization that there is this intricate and intimate link between freedom of expression and access to information. The value that is at stake here is principally the value of transparency. And in South Africa, for example, after our new constitution in 1994, this is one of the cornerstones of our democracy. And it's a cornerstone of many functional democracies in the world today transparency, because good governance and transparency often go hand in hand and access to information just keeps transparency in place. It keeps the openness and those who are holding power honest, because there's a light that shines on their activities and there's public access to um, the relevant information. When this realization of the importance of access to information kind of dawned, on the world, in the African context, there were few states that had laws that enabled individuals to actually make use of this right. And for that reason, this special rapporteur on freedom of expression and access to information of the African Commission, she embarked on a process of developing a model law on access to information in Africa. A model law is exactly as the name indicates. It's a model that serves as a kind of a source of inspiration to national legislatures to inform them and uh, give them a kind of a blueprint to guide legislative processes to adopt similar laws at the national level. It doesn't mean that the state has to follow in every respect the, the, the model law, but the model law has kind of taken on board wisdom in national jurisdictions in Africa and further afield, it set out kind of a, a workable way in which states that want to adopt a model law can do so quite easily. That's the idea. It's quite a, a beautiful thing. And as it happened, after the African Commission had adopted this model law as a source of inspiration to um, national legislatures in Africa, quite a number of them had followed suit. They've looked at their existing laws if they had existing laws and they reviewed them in the light of the model law or when there were no laws in place they actually took the model law and reworked it and kind of adjusted it to the local conditions to adopt legislation of its own and it must be said that the special rapporteur had been quite instrumental in this process not only in the process of adoption of the model law but perhaps more importantly, in the process of taking that model law to the different states which had not had a law in place, working with government officials, getting civil society energized to take this matter forward. So it is this synergy of factors that have seen this model law not uh, resigned to the uh, shelves, but actually become an inspirational tool within many African states. So I think that's, uh, that in my mind is, is one of the great success stories of the African Commission 
and its work in Africa. And we, as the Center for Human Rights, having worked with the Special Rapporteur over a number of years on this issue, we are, we are very proud and we are very impressed with the way that that has evolved over time. Mm -hmm.